Hello and welcome, very warm welcome from the BitCountry and Metaverse Network team. We are so glad that you could join us for our demo day as we introduce you to the talent working hard behind the scenes and reveal how they've been working to make your Metaverse dreams a reality. Now, if you're tuning in live, congratulations. Um, you will receive a very special PoApp NFT. Um, so you can remember this moment forever and ever. As Gali said, I'm Juanita. I'm General Manager of Industry Connect Global. We are here to support the required talent needed for the Metaverse and development moving forward. The Metaverse Career Academy will be the initiative um, that will develop the talent to be used. So what I'll do for you all is I'll pop the link um, for the Metaverse Career Academy in the chat box. Please pop over there, have a look at it, register your expression of interest, and we'll get in touch with you as soon as we launch. Thank you, everyone. It's um, Kira from New Zealand. My name is Echo. Um, I'm the co-founder of a new um, project called Meta Dojo. First of all, we build metaverse premises in the form of an NFT, ready to be used and to be deployed on any open metaverse land um, and your website if you're not um, quite there yet. And secondly, we give you toolkits to uh, facilitate interior economy to help you to further grow that uh, the value of your digital assets. And um, the creator's economy is a very important part of our of our growth, which lead to our close partnership with uh, Juanita and her team from Industry Connect, uh, which we are long, looking at launching a meta, very first Metaverse Career Academy early. Uh, early next year before we have a formal um, beta launch on the big country metaverse network so yeah we would very much looking forward to provide you with ready to use um, nft buildings to be deployed on your on your metaverse um, land in big country and start to have some fun start to bring value start to show it off to our friends um, so my name is Andy McKelvey, I'm a mentor at MVP Studio. So MVP Studio is an incubator with over 2,000 members. Uh, we'll be working with BitCountry, a meta, uh, metaverse network, for all the future ecosystem projects and any developments going into the future. I'm Ray, I'm the CEO and the co-founder of uh, BitCountry and the metaverse network. This is our ecosystem. We have over 100 established committed partnerships. Uh, on the left hand side is our fully operated owned partnership. There is a Metaverse Foundation we issue grants. Big Country has already explained. We have a Metaverse Career Academy, which is uh, supported by Singapore government. So students in Singapore can join this academy without any cost. Uh, and Imoka Brains and Berkeley Blockchain uh, uh, Accelerator also a backer of this academy. Uh, as a, we're Andy Farm, we have 2,000 developers and members inside our incubator. That's where all our startups are uh, being uh, launched inside the incubator, along with the Industry Connect trained talents. So in our group, we have about uh, over, uh, I mean, four established startups have their own CEOs and team with a total employee of about 60 people. Uh, some of you guys probably know that we also run a sc uh, school for Polkadot for a little while. We train about over 400 software developers currently serving the Polkadot ecosystem. And a parity and Big Country and our college team, we com uh, combine together, uh, collaborate to put this uh, academy, and also we issue the certificate with the Polkadot and the parity logo. On the right hand side, we have uh, many ecosystem partners. Uh, we announced quite a few during our Prolo. There are a lot more exciting news to be announced in the future. So thanks everyone. I think most of you guys already participated in our Prolo. Uh, today, I would like to give you a head up of our upcoming event with the Polkadot. Uh, yes, so uh, we are participating in the Prolo in February. Uh, we try to secure or will secure a slot and uh, hopefully that will be a similar result to Busama because we broke the historical record uh, by the total number of participation uh, contributors. Uh, at the time, we locked away 100 million um, um, KSM in total, and uh, we created some movement uh, in the KSM price during the auction time, which was really interesting to see. Yeah, so our culture is more like a, a journey together 
uh, through my co-founding teams, all my startups, or the CEOs, co-founder, were my former students many, many years ago. I handpicked them from thousand people. What I promised the future to Justin, Shannon, Daniel, uh, Echo, Kai, Juanita, everyone else is that, you know, from the relationship starts, you, you were students, now you're my top employees. The next steps, you'll become co-founder and the CEOs. And so far, my promise is fulfilled, right? <laughs> and the next step is I said, if you don't want to be a CEO, you wouldn't work with me for a long time because I need the leaders. I want you to be the CEO. I will be your backers one day. I'll continue to push every single one of us to do a startup in the future in our ecosystem. And uh, so far, I think I fulfilled 75% of my promises. Again, for the near holders or new holders, I will treat you same as my co-founder team or employees because we knew each other when we were nobody. We knew each other before we even when we met. You will decide to contribute and believe in our vision. And I truly appreciate you as a visionary as well. Um, as Gaddy mentions, my name is Justin Pham and I'm the CTO um, um, on the blockchain expect. So leading the whole um, blockchain development team to develop the metaverse, um, you know, we call it metaverse machine. Um, so yeah, I think a little bit about my background is, um, yeah, I've been working as the solution architect, um, senior dev and, you know, being the CTO for in the last, you know, um, more than 10 years. So yeah, I think since 2017, I started working on the blockchain um, and, you know, since that, you know, we've been um, working a lot on the different um, aspects. So, um, yeah, so a little bit about on the blockchain aspects, I already create, um, I, you know, I, I create like a solidity course that help the people to understand more on the solidity, how they can build a DApp, um, you know, on Ethereum. Um, and it is very recent I participate in the Substrate um, Dev Academy, which is like the world um, first, you know, like the party technology is doors, um, bucket dots, the, um, you know, we, we introduce about substrates and stuff like that. So this slice um, from Ray talk, um, it's a little bit more about like the, the high overview of what is the BitCountry Metaverse platform. So at the bottom layer is the blockchain protocol we call Metaverse Network, which is that the um, the backbone of entire networks that can store the value. Um, on top of that is we got like the BitCountry applications, um, frameworks and UI, um, which is that um, later on we can show that into um, Shannon Christie, the co-founders and CTO on the Metaverse, we can show you more in detail of what is Intel, um, what it's look like. All right. So um, as the ecosystems that can either participate directly into um, the metaverse network, I will show you that how you can interact with that. Um, as, as we already mentioned, there's going to be some grants and some support there um, if you want to, to build your ecosystem projects on the metaverse. All right. Here's a slide of screen for how you can create a metaverse. Um, let me just quickly put um, the name of your metaverse. Or like mythical to strike, um, you know, if everything's that, um, so I can call maybe um, uh, kingdom. All right, so um, so this is where the community that they can share the code, they can NFT noise, um, you know, there's piece of course, and they can share the create moments or do the BIT mining together. All right, um, it's just for the demo purpose. Um, they can choose whatever the themes that I want to um, to create for them, my metaverse. Um, Maybe I can choose space. Um, so now I just need to size and confirm the transactions. Um, so inside of Bokodot extension. So when it's size the transactions, um, so it's going to be locked into the blockchain. So this means when you start creating the metaverse, your assets are already specialized on the blockchain. All right. Um, and here's the steps that you can establish your own economy. Um, it really depends on the features we're going to enable from day one. Um, but if you know, you can skip the step or you can mint the NFT. Um, sorry, you can mint your own source of token for your metaverse. So, um, you know, by default, this is going to use Noom or Near as the default currency for your metaverse, um, unless that you can pass the governance um, to accept your social tokens. Okay. Um, but for the development purpose, it's show everything. Um, Let's say I'm just creating like the metaverse, um, so meta, um, the meta quarter coins, um, sorry, just called tokens, um, DC. Um, so you can set your total supply, um, 
you know, less. at the moment I'm set like a total supply of 100,000, um, initial supply to a DAX pool. So which is like a fully decentralized, um, you know, version of um, liquidity, okay? Um, so when you create a total supply, 10% of that gonna go directly into the pool that people can swap, they can, um, you know, provide liquidity, you can bootstrap your liquidity what's new, okay? Um, so yeah, and then you can choose to back the number of new um, for that 20% of total supply. So let's say I'm back with 20 new. Um, let's just confirm and try, you know, start a transaction. So before I start a transaction, I can see, um, you know, all the detail of how many nooms that I need to create. So it really depends on how many nooms that you back for your total supply. Um, you can see the similar change rate over here. Um, you know, later on, we can support the SDT. Um, so now you can just, um, this is side transaction to complete um, everything okay so um yeah i think for the blockchains we're trying to strap everything but normally it's going to take around like six seconds to the whole blockchain um you know like finalized okay so now since everything is all fully finalized um and then we can just go directly into our metaverse hi everyone um thanks for joining in great to see you all so yeah, let's start looking a little bit more at the platform. Um, thanks Justin and Ray and everyone else uh, for your role of course in uh, demoing of the product at the moment and the development such as well. But let's head on over into our um, first uh, metaverse. So with the metaverse, as you kind of already saw a bit, um, you can put in different uh, images and such uh, when it comes to the land block so you can customize how it looks it is an opportunity where potentially you do sponsorship or maybe you do advertising or whatever the case may be that would be something that'll be up to your decision uh, for your metaverse you can decide how you want to do that process but it is available to you you can kind of customize how it looks so once you have arrived at your uh, map for your metaverse you're able to grab this little person and drag and drop them over into the world and let it go when this happens uh, the world will start to load up um, it needs to of course get some basic details you can see the loading screen um, that we showed on the uh, crowd loan page and things like this as well yeah, so you can see the loading screen again uh, one of the big design goals as hopefully you've already heard is for us to make sure that the whole world loads very quickly. Uh, we do have a requirement essentially uh, that we've put in place that we need to aim to keep the world loading in less than three seconds. And yeah, we're into the world. So we can see, first of all, that it loads right in your browser. Uh, we've got um, some text and stuff from my testing uh, yesterday with uh, the text tool and stuff like that. But let me kind of go through the process. So just now we've entered into uh, the world um, in a kind of view uh, mode. In the future, you will be able to, for example, over on this uh, left-hand side, uh, at least that's the idea at this stage we will have a menu item for picking missions and game modes and things like that in which case when you enter into the world you'd be entering for a specific purpose and a specific uh, goal for you to do when you got into it um, in the future uh, there is also of course uh, things on the roadmap to support more devices and such we want to make sure that it is accessible so we started with this web version first. It's something that you can access on your mobile. It's something you can access on your computer and things like that. And it doesn't necessarily take too much in terms of uh, performance from the computer. At the moment, I am using an Intel Nook. It is just integrated graphics and we can see that it actually runs pretty well. So that's something to, to keep in mind. Uh, we are looking further along the roadmap to bring things like an Unreal Engine version. Uh, potentially looking at other things as well. It is later on the roadmap as well that we want to look at a VR uh, process as well. But yeah, let's uh, focus a little bit more in terms of what you can do inside of your metaverse. So your avatar is customizable. There is a avatar customizer at this stage. Um, it is being worked on and it's not really in a state to, to demonstrate too much, uh, but it is a one where you can select your avatar. You can potentially put different uh, cosmetics and things like that on. Um, and yeah, that's 
something to mention there. So you can customize how you look in the world. You can do things like when you enter it, you could change the size and such. But still, anyway, now that we're here, we see that we have this voxel-based world. We're able to very simply uh, remove and place items. We can open up a menu where we can see a selection of different blocks. These are something that you can configure as a metaverse owner. You can create your own blocks if you wanted to and stick your face on it and just paste it around the world. That's completely up to you. When it comes to modifying or changing the world, that's where bits will come into play again. When you are placing blocks or changing the world, there is a cost in terms of resources, a cost in terms of performance for users. So when you place your blocks, it will be spending your bit that you earn by staking your land, by mining and things like that. And that's something I'll share a little bit more about a bit later on. Uh, we can also have a look at objects and such. Um, I think I just saw my screen stop sharing for a moment. So hopefully you can still see fine. Um, you can put your NFTs here on this particular account. I don't have any NFTs. We can also do props and things like that. These are essentially 3D models and assets that you're putting into the world that don't necessarily have to be NFTs or anything like that. It's a pretty straightforward process to do. Um, so we can uh, select one of these. Uh, it seems like my computer is having a hissy fit with Zoom streaming. Um, once we have a little bit more time on my CPU to do stuff, or maybe I need to start closing things in the background. Hopefully you can still see things all right. Uh, it's just being a little bit slow with the Zoom streaming and such. So we can pick one of these uh, assets that we've already created in the past, or we can just create a new one. Normally you would use a model file such as GLB. Uh, let me just, for example, uh, pick a new asset. So I do my asset. So this would be creating a brand new thing that I can put into the world. It's pretty straightforward. We pick our file, we give it a name, then we just go through and do the process of uh, creating it. So it's just creating a new one. Um, then uh, we'll be in a position to be able to place it into the world. Again, my computer is really not happy about doing the streaming. Um, it's pretty uh, simple that once it's in, you can just kind of pick it, let it load and place it into the world. Here's this new asset I've just made. Let's just pick this one because I know it's a little bit lighter. So we do that. We can see that it's in the world now. We're able to rotate it. We can scale it larger or smaller. Once we're happy with the position, we can right click and the asset is now in the world. Again, this is something that you would spend a bit based on the complexity of your 3D asset that you're placing. If it has a very high poly count, if it has a very expensive uh, size or does things like that, you'll need to spend more bit to cover that. So we can see it's pretty straightforward uh, to be able to do that. We can also do media in terms of videos and images and things like that. Um, so that's one of those things that you can do as well if you want to be able to put different images and stuff into the world. So if we can jump over to the tools section in a bit, um, that's where we'll be able to see some of the other tools that are available inside of the metaverse, uh, where we can do things like customize uh, your environments for your metaverse, remove, tool, uh, remove assets and things like that as well. And we also have a typewriter. So for example, if you wanted to be able to put your own text into the world, oops, not that button, go here, set it to red, to 40, we can say the classic hello world. And then we can also just place that into the world, but we won't do that in this case. If we head over to the environment customizer, this is just a, a simpler uh, version at the stage. We will build it out further so that we can uh, make it easier for you to understand. We can configure our sky. We can configure the ground color. Um, in the past, we had a texture for the ground color. At the stage, we've made it a grid. Again, it will be something that you'll be able to configure. You can choose to use a texture or an image if you want for your ground. So if we make it green now, we can see that it updates it. And yeah, so that shows you a little bit about uh, the process here. Uh, we can see, for example, that we've put in a large uh, stadium or something here. We can see that we have a large animated um, 
uh, a basketball trophy. Again, that's all using that same process I shared just before in terms of placing this model here. So yeah, uh, you have quite a lot of control in terms of how you do it. It's all pretty straightforward in terms of uh, placing into the world. You don't need to have any technical skills or anything like that. Um, as long as you know how to, to use your, your mouse and keyboard, um, as long as you know how to, to enter into the world, then you're going to be in a pretty good position to be able to, to customize it, to, to modify it and such. Um, something that I haven't necessarily shared here that's also important to keep in mind is that you can attach behavior to um, assets you've placed into the world. Um, and that would be able to do mini games and things like that for your community as well. That kind of shows you a little bit about the world. Uh, another area to touch on that Ray briefly showed, there is the feeds for your metaverse as well. That's where your community will be able to, to do posts and things like that. The feeds is where you'll be able to show your posts and such. Um, it's uh, a place for the community to be able to share events. That's where you could have timeline things happen, like if you walked into the world and um, someone walked into your shop and they met certain criteria, it could automatically record it and post it to your timeline and different things like that. So yeah, I think that gives you a little bit of an idea in terms of uh, what you can do in the world. You can see that's a pretty straightforward process. You can just grab those model files that you could get from the marketplace or something like that. You can create your own when you follow the specification. You'll better find out more details about that later. And hey everyone, um, good to see you all here. And my name is Daniel Choi. So I'm one of the co-founder of the Bikenji team and also a software developer um, who focusing on the web and also the game development. So Global Marketplace allow uh, the users to put the NFTs such as their shoes, jacket, um, 3D model or sound that you build from uh, any form of NFT to put it here um, for sale across um, different metaverses on the global marketplace. So on the left side, uh, uh, we can see the filter of the marketplace and then uh, we group the filter into those categories for now, such as the listing type, the rarity, um, the keyword and also the collections. So there are different types of the listing on our marketplace, um, such as the on sale, um, on auctions or for rent. Also at different level of the rarity, different collection representing different set of the NFTs. So um, on top of the menu bar, um, we can choose different categories from here. So we've got the avatars, we've got the art, 3D models, music, and etc. Uh, et so um, for instance, um, we are going to have a look at the avatar. And also you can use the filter here to choose the epic item or the uh, legendary item or both. So um, in this case, um, I want to select those items and also this is something that I'm interested in it. So this is the first meta, uh, human in the metaverse and once you open it, so you can see the 3D model on the left and some basic information about the NFT on this page. So um, with the 3D viewer, so you can um, um, rotate the 3D viewer to have a look at the model in different uh, angle. And also you can have a look at the right side to see some more basic information about the um, in, uh, NFT, such as the bidding history from the past, and then the NFT supporters, who was the supporters uh, for this NFT, and also the ownership of this NFT, and also some insight of the uh, NFT. Okay. So we can just exit this page and come back to the global marketplace and keep browsing by just clicking the reset filter. So we're going back to the um, home page where it shows all the M uh, NFTs and you can just keep scrolling down to find out the best uh, NFT that you're looking for or just uh, using the uh, filtering option on the filter. Okay, the next thing, the next big thing that I want to share with you guys is the subdivision tool. Okay, so if we go to the Genesis VC and we go to the subdivision, um, this is the tool that we uh, can subdivide our uh, land block. So in big country, a land block can have the maximum of 100 subdivided land units, and they are all subdividable. Um, once the land block uh, owner divides the land, each divided land unit will form an estate. 
So you can divide the land into different estates for different purposes, such as for the lease or for sale. This tool is going to em uh, empower the landowner to subdivide uh, the land for their community, and also it provides a good vision on how you would arrange your estate. So for this example, um, I'm going to select the Daniel's NFT. So this is, uh, as you know, my NFT. And on the left side of this page, this is where you can divide the land unit with a land block by single clicking or by just uh, drag uh, this clip. Okay, and then you can add the new estate. Okay, the reason we can do it because um, each subdivi subdivide the land must be next to each other. So this is how we add and form the estate. Um, <clears throat> sorry, as you can see. Okay, and um, on the right side, you can also see the new estate and existing estate. So the existing estate is the group of the estate that you built before. And um, you can also um, deleting or updating the estate using this uh, tab, okay? So um, we couldn't do it for now because we have to finish our previous action. So once you click the um, create new estate, so the, um, it will um, trigger those uh, functions and creating the estate in the database. And also um, you can update removing um, all those estate in here as long as the status of the estate become needed, not pending. Okay, so um, this is basically how the subdivision tools work. And um, I think this is quite a simple tool, but with a great purpose. Uh, can you hear me? I'm Mike, blockchain developer based in London. Uh, today I'm going to show you our Met uh, Metaverse governance user interface. Uh, so yeah, this is a, a governance page and we built this to allow uh, members of a metaverse to create proposals and to also vote uh, on ongoing uh, referendums. So to create a proposal, we just have to select some action and this action should make some meaningful change to your metaverse. So I'm just going to select one here, uh, metaverse, uh, freeze metaverse. So when we can create a proposal, um, a referendum will begin. And this will give you and your members a chance to vote on whether you want this proposal to be enacted on your uh, metaverse or not. So if I go into the free uh, metaverse uh, referendum, we can see some details here, such as the name and for which uh, country this is, uh, metaverse it is. We have a voting time and we also have options to vote yes or no. So this is all happening on chain. If I vote yes, and this is going to update. And once this uh, referendum is finished, then the action that we pre-selected before, Freeze Metaverse, will be scheduled to execute on-chain in a couple of blocks time. And uh, yeah, all of this would, uh, would, will happen automatically without any, um, any manual intervention. So using this power of on-chain governance, Metaverse owners can make meaningful changes and make it a better place for themselves and their users. Uh, my name is Jiren. Uh, I'm a senior software developer. Uh, I work closely with Justin uh, on the blockchain side of things. So before I joined the country, uh, I was a cloud solution architect at the Deloitte. So as someone saying that uh, cloud is someone else's computer, so it's really important to have uh, monitoring tools. So um, um, apart from blockchain and um, the metaverse, we got uh, I mean, call indexer. So that's basically will retrieve all the events that are happening on the blockchain and then sync that to our um, gaming side of things. Um, so, uh, for example, uh, we create a metaverse um, that happens on chain, then we want to send the data back to the, uh, to the metaverse. Um, so then we use blockchain as a single source of choice. Um, so, this thing is called indexer. Um, basically, that will do those things and um, so it's important to keep an eye on this seeing everything's working as expected. Recently we have won the uh, some auction and uh, um, I think right now it's in the onboarding process. Everything will be live in about five or four days time. Um, so we recently have set up a uh, Prometheus and Grafana to uh, monitor the clicker nodes. Uh, they'll give us a pretty good idea how this is performing at the moment. Um, or give us the uh, number of RPC connections, the peer node. Um, so based, apart from that, we also um, set up the basic monitoring on the um, on our um, 
with, uh, virtual machine. Um, as you can see, our CPU is pretty 100%. Uh, we definitely do spin that up. Hey everyone, how are you doing? Let me just share my screen real quick. So this is an early version of our avatar customizer. Um, it has GPU support for morph maps and things like that. So content creators are going to be able to upload their own avatars and create their own sliders and customizables for people to actually edit. Um, users will be able to use the decal editor to customize their avatar. I'll just go back to that again. Um, so that you can choose or customize what your avatar looks like and put your own logos on things and really make it your own. Um, we are also working on customizable, so wearables like clothing and better avatars, obviously. This is a very old version. We have a hologram shader and a bird that you're going to be able to use in the world. Um, you'll be able to apply that to various other um, buildings and effects and things you place in the world. And finally, this is our loading screen, which is something I made recently. It's very lightweight. It's under 100K, it runs on mobile, um, and it looks great. So you'll probably see this a fair bit every time you log in. Hey guys, um, so I'm working uh, with Shannon um, as a 3D artist. I'm making models that will work within the engine. Yeah, so this is an example of uh, an avatar that players can use um, within the, that they could pick and use within the engine. Um, and the idea behind this one was uh, you could blend between uh, each version. So this is it. Um, this is where the rig was built. So that's like an example of it morphing between um, each avatar. Um, so this piece was for a influencer online. Um, and this is it here. Um, I just built out a wee composition for it and I'll add the textures on. So this is like, as maybe he had a, a bunch of followers as his army and he could give out um, his mask as an NFT perhaps. And this could be, um, possibly represent who you are online as like your ultra personality. So this is obviously a higher um, fidelity than what it would exist as on in the online engine. Um, I'm the designer in the Big Country team, and my name is Logan, who are working very closely with developers and our marketing team behind the scene. And I believe you guys already seen my work from websites, uh, products, or NFTs, or all the way to variety posters and banners on social media. As you can see, uh, this is our next uh, project, Metasoap, and we guarantee you guys we're gonna. Uh, not gonna extract uh, your souls from you guys. Uh, it's actually uh, something like in this uh, parallel virtual world, you're gonna have a second or the third identity in that world. You could be anything. Uh, you could be a virtual human. You could be a robot. Maybe you can be um, animals, any object that can carry consciousness and uh, they were driven by a powerful AI. Uh, you're gonna learn new behaviors. Yeah, in the future, you're gonna have your own personality.